If you have a welder or plasma cutter, you know what this 80 pound monstrosity is. And you know what a pain it is every time you gotta drag it out and then wind it up and put it away. So today, we're gonna convert this monstrosity of an extension cord into a retractable cord rail. We're gonna use this inexpensive hose rail and adapt it. It's easier than you think and doesn't cost that much. Keep watching. So there's 50 feet of air hose on it. Attach an air hose here. This swivels around and lets it never kink up. You can pull it out up to 50 feet. You can stop every foot or so and it locks. You pull it out a little bit further and it retracts all the way in. Beautiful thing, the exact same principle as a retractable cord reel. We just need to make it, instead of flowing air through there, we just need to make this cord flow electrons. So this right here is what's called a slip ring. It's commonly used in appliances that spin. Windmills are a very common thing for them right now. And so what happens is in here, there's actually, this one actually has six. There's six brushes lined up in here and they spin and they touch each other. So these six wires come out and they touch on the outside and the inside there's gonna be a, a shaft with different copper rings and it allows this to spin around indefinitely. So this set of wire never has to move and this can just sit there and you can you can helicopter it if you want. Doesn't matter. They're rated to just go and go and go and go. They're rated for, you know, a million cycles before they fail. But that just needs to mount directly in the center where our air hose is and so this right here is where the air comes in and then it just feeds around and comes out here. This is just a nut that kind of retains this uh, plate on. So we remove that. And then just to show you underneath, we don't need anything underneath, but just to show you what there is. This is your clock spring. This is the main spring that when you pull out your cord, actually winds, rewinds the, the, the hose for you. It's the same thing that's in a um, the pull start of your lawnmower, stuff like that, just way bigger. So we don't need any of that. This plate though, what we need, this is just a, um, we need to put a nut there just to retain this cover. I mean, these, there's little four little nuts around the outside that'll retain it, but we'll put a nut in the center just to help retain it. So that goes there. Now to mount our slip ring, what we need to do is just offset it. And so what I did was I actually cut a chunk of pipe. So we just have a, uh, this is about three and a half inches. Doesn't really matter. Cut a hole in the bottom for the cord to come in. So the cord will come into the bottom right there. And then this will tuck down inside there. And then this will just need to be centered over the center of this pivot, you know, where it spins so that this spins centered instead of having it spin off center. So. Okay, got that all welded on and bolt it back down with those four bolts and then the one bolt in the middle. This stuff is paper thin, so, but it's just kind of a protection layer, but I'm mounting to it, but this feels secure. I mean, it's nice, it's on there good. Again, there's really no force really acting on it. So, we have the hole here that I made the same size as a um, restraint, as a wire clamp, so that will mount in the side and I know this is just a hose, and I, met, I positioned this where I thought that the, the actual wire would bend around the nicest. So we can just take off this little sleeve, and that all that air hose is out. We should be able to take our wire now. Push that up through. So we're gonna talk wiring for just one second. I'm not gonna to go too far into it. But um, welders, this is, this is a welder extension cord. And welders, you know, if you're looking at wiring your home or something for a welder, the NEC, um, code books and all the codes in there, you'll find that Article 630 talks about welders all by themselves. They have a completely different rating than anything else and it scares the crap out of people. 
because it's way thinner than you're used to. Or you go to the Home Depot, you ask the guy, you ask an electrician, and most electricians have virtually never wired a welder for somebody. They're, it's not that common to wire a welder in a new construction or somebody's house. So the rule book essentially says you because it's a duty cycle because you know a welder only runs for you know at maximum peak 50 amps it only runs it has a 20 percent duty cycle that for two minutes that means two minutes it runs and it has to sit for eight minutes until it can run again so the wire has a chance to cool down so you can run way thinner wire than you can with anything else unlike an oven or something in your house where you you turn it on, it might be on just continually heating for 45 minutes, an hour, two hours, you know, a full blast. You could have every single burner on the top of your stove on, and that thing is pulling 50 amps for hours. Welder, you would never do that unless you're in a commercial setting. As far as a homeowner, no way. Okay, saying that, this slip ring is the biggest I could find. I actually found more bigger ones domestically that were around 40 amps. Uh, a lot of 30 amps, but I, I think I even found some 40 amp ones, but I found this one online that was listed from China, really no picture, but it was just listed by the details as being a 60 amp three wire, okay? I got it, and it's not a 60 amp three wire. It is a 30 amp six wire. So each one of these wires is 12 gauge, it can halt, carry maximum of 30 amps through this short distance. It's shorter the distance, the more amperage you can carry without overheating anything. So what they did was a no-no when they wired, they just connected two together, which is a big no-no. You never want to do that, and you would never want to run two hots parallel to each other where you need that amperage. So if you were running an oven or something to that effect and you needed 60 amps, running it through this would be a no-no because if one broke, you know, if one of these connections just came unconnected, the other wire would overheat and cause a fire, okay? What I am doing, the 12 amp, the 12 gauge by itself is more than enough to handle the welders in my shop. It is plenty. Don't believe me? Go look at your welder. I guarantee it either has a 14 gauge wire on it or a 12 gauge wire. I've owned about 20 stick welders, other welders, my brand new welder that I just bought a couple months ago, 240 volts, has a 14 gauge wire on it. That's what powers it. So the 12 gauge is bigger than that, if you don't know. But anyway, I am wiring them together for one reason, redundancy in the electrical contacts. I am not re relying on these connectors to share the load. I am just doing it as a redundancy in here so these contacts always have good contacts and if one goes out it it'll still work i the one wire is more than enough to handle everything my welder would do this also does not even come into the nec the national electric code um categories because it's not fixed into the house it's not a house it's not hidden in the walls it is like extensions cords and stuff like that those have nothing to do with nec those are like those are private industry. The CE can list them. You can see China, electric, whatever that electrical code passed or UL underwriter laboratories listed, whatever. Has nothing to do with the NEC. This is, this is plenty safe. It will not overheat. I will test it. I will check it. It's safe. Anyway, all my connections, I am, the wire nuts are just there as kind of an insulator. I soldered every single one of the connections because solder is going to be the most robust connection the best absolute connection the wire nuts are on there just as a extra insulating factor um, versus just wrapping it with electrical tape and then i'm going to take some 3m super 33 and just wrap up the wire nut and just make sure it doesn't fall off so when you, you jam it in there and now we can wedge all this lucky me look i, I almost forgot to put that on before i started soldering that would have sucked. We should be able to jam everything in there. It's always a crappy type fit when you're dealing with heavy gauge wire. There we go. Technically, you could be done right now. See, this can spin any way, which way. So this can be connected directly to your power source. I want this. I don't want this just to be free floating here. I think I want to make this attach to a fixed point 
off of the base. This will actually hang against the ceiling, so it's technically upside down for me. So I want this to go into an outlet box, like, like this, into a metal outlet box, and then I will have the power cord come in that will go out with, that will have the plug that will go over and plug in. So I just bent up a quick little bracket out of sheet metal, did some other bends just to make it stronger. And that's just going to weld on right here so I can mount the box to it and the wires can come into it. And there we go, it's all connected up. These connections are all soldered and wire nutted and taped. Yeah, the wire nuts again are just for like extra insulation properties. But look at that, for you retentive people, look, I'll even make the screws face exactly the same way. Boom. I have it sitting on, hanging off my bench right now. I want to hang, I gotta hang it from the roof, but I want to weld on a little bit more bracket. You can see this side, this is a, um, this would not work as easy with a double sided um, hose reel. Some of them mount on both sides. But you can see this arm right here. There's a, there's a decent amount of flex to it which even with the hose, it would be flexy. But I want to weld on another plate up here to bolt up through, and then a arm that comes down to triangulate that, and that'll take all that flex out. So that's a perfect opportunity, you know, to weld on itself. So we'll plug in the welder, and we'll put a good hot, hot bead. We'll throw some quarter inch steel on there and just see what it does and see what my temps are. My 12 gauge wire is ice cold. Completely done. Now I just have to hang it up in the ceiling. Triangulating this, putting this extra bracket on, triangulating it made it way more stable. So just thought I'd give you one last close-up look of everything, you know, in case you want to build one your own. But that's it. It'll just mount up to the ceiling, and we'll be done. It's going up there. It is a little heavy, so you do have to give it a little, you have to kind of help it out just a little bit towards the end versus an air hose that's so light that it just wants to rock it back. But you just take off whatever you need. Boom. So if this is something you're interested in doing, definitely read the video description. I'll put more details on exactly what I did because there's some things I did just because that's what I had, like using 8-4 wire, not necessary. I actually, the fourth uh, wire, I just omitted. I didn't even use it. So it's extra weight in the strand that's not even needed. 10-3 um, would work great um, or even 8-3, perfectly fine. The uh, slip ring that I used, you actually only need a three conductor and I'll put links to the stuff and my research and everything I found and more update details on it if I need to. So definitely read the video description. Thanks for watching, guys. See you soon. Bye. You ready? This is your moment. Okay. Crawl. Good job. Jump. Good job. Balance. Stop.